we've been talking about faith in operation, and um, subtitle is Faith Creates. You know, Jesus created by, a spoken, by his spoken word, right? Hallelujah. And so, if he spoke and created by his spoken word and we're his children, I think we need to create too by our words. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, John Osteen say, you form your world by your words. And so, I create my world around me full of God. I created full of the blessing. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Hallelujah. Amen. I have the mind of the Lord. I know all things according to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I walk in the newness of God. I walk in prosperity. My body is healed from the crown of my head to the soles of feet. I walk in health, total health. What am I saying? I, I, I'm creating. I walk in total health. Hallelujah. Amen. And so do you, right? Let's look at Romans, the 17th chapter. We left off Wednesday about speaking about faith creates. Remember, make that command of faith, get that word, speak that word, declare that word, hallelujah, amen. And so we've been talking about creates, faith creates. Let's look at it again. In Romans, the fourth chapter, Abraham and Sarah, Abram and Sarai, uh, were given a word of the Lord, a promise of the word of the Lord. That's like you. God gives you a word, a promise, then he has to fulfill it in your life. Now notice this, has to according to your confession. Well, God, I thought you said God will fulfill it. Yeah, according to your confession. God said it, now you have to confess it. But the moment we don't confess or we speak negative, then we, we, <laughs> we hinder and, and uh, shortcut that blessing. But the blessing's still there, we just need to connect to it, right? Hallelujah. Now, whatever it is that you're needing from God, I mean, whatever it may be, I think anything that you ask God for is going to take faith. You may be the wealthiest person in the world, but you're still going to need faith. I said that for years and years before, before Brother Trump was president or uh, pres uh, when he was the president. I would say even Brother Trump is going to need faith. Amen. And so I believe, I believe he would be walking in faith. All of us are walking in faith. Amen. Um, I remember when, when we moved to Oklahoma City, we, we left a beautiful home uh, on the market for sale in Texas, and we moved out of here, and so we went into a duplex, and even that duplex was a brand new duplex, never, 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 but in, no one ever lived in it. They had just built it, and God directed us right to a brand new duplex. Beautiful couple that owned it. And uh, we stayed there during our house was selling in Texas, but... During that process, we believed God for a house. And one of the things that I was concerned about, how we're going to pay two, how we're going to pay two houses? Well, that's doubt. Until we said, no, we're going to believe God that we're going to have a house here and our house in Texas is going to sell. Well, to make a short, short, uh, a story short, we found our house, we prayed for it, uh, and um, the day that we got news that it was up for sale, our house in Texas sold the same day. The same day, same day our realtor told us this house is on the market, the same day our house sold. So we said we're buying it. And so the transactions, back in them days, I guess you would do by wire transfer. I guess how they do it now, but still. But we got the house. But I'll never forget that that was the spoken word we said. We said, no, we're going to get a house here and our house going to sell out there. Amen. So those are the words that we're talking about. That's faith and operation. Fear would have said, no, uh, we, we got to wait till we sell that house first, honey. Let's wait till we sell that house first, and then we'll live here in this duplex, and then we'll just hope for a nice house. That's not faith. That's operating in your own strength and your own wisdom. But God has ways of operating when you trust him by faith. Now, you may think that's ridiculous. Uh, we, we had a couple coming to our church years ago that was ready for a new house, and I told them what happened to us, and they said, we're going to agree that it happens to us. So they ended up buying a house, a beautiful home, beautiful mansion, really. And when they bought that house, this one sold. Amen. And they said, it works. Yeah, it works. Of course it works. Amen. Now notice what it says in verses 17. The Bible says this. The Bible says, as it is written. Circle that word written, as it is written. If you don't know what's written, you have no declaration. For it is written. For as it is written. I have made thee a father. 
made thee. He didn't say, I'm going to make you a father. I made you a father. God told Abraham, I made you a father right now as I spoke. Of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth, uh, put down summons, makes a declaration. He summons, makes a declaration, those things which be not as though they were. Underline that word, as though they were. In other words, listen, uh, we're not talking about as though they are, because that would not be faith. That's, that's like saying, well, God, you can, do, you, can do, uh, you can do what you did for the Gonzaleses. No, he wants to do something for you personally. The Gonzaleses have a testimony to encourage you, but he's got something greater and better for you, your level of faith. Your house may be bigger than my house. You may have more income than I do. It's your level. So in other words, he says, he calls those things that were. What does that mean, were? It's already designed. It's already, de it's already developed. It's not are. Now notice, notice this. He calls, he calls as they were, not calls as they are. I want to say it again. A lot of people get this scripture mixed up. He calls those things that are, are as though, he calls those things that are not as though they are. I heard so many Christians say that. Oh, the word of God said he calls those things which are, those things that are not as though they are. And that's not the Bible. And, and, and we're going to confess that out of context or confess it out of the, the way it's written, then that little word there can get you in trouble or delay your faith. Because you got to go, Father, as it is written, your word says you summon those things. Now let's look at it again. You summons those things who quicken the dead and summons or calls those things which be not as though they were. What was dead, you make alive. Bank says, I can't have this. It doesn't matter. It's a dead deal there, but God, you make it alive. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to realize, and notice this, if you look at, let me read to you from the Good News Bible, that little phrase. God who commands, who command brings into being what did not exist. And notice this, God commands that thing which did not exist. But notice this, that existence is a hope that you have, a dream that you have. Do you know there's nothing wrong with you dreaming a beautiful dream of God? Having dreams of the presence of God, you and God enjoying yourself on a beach. I think we're talking about that, right? In the Bahamas. Uh, uh, enjoying yourselves and just having a wonderful time. Amen? Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with you just having, you could go to bed at night and say, Father, I worship and honor you, Lord. I pray, I pray tonight you give me beautiful dreams, Lord. Beautiful dreams, not pizza dreams, not bad dreams, not TV dreams, or not murder dreams, or not fearful dreams, but God dreams. And let God just take a hold of your dream pattern. Just dream and, woo, and write it down. Say, Father, I had a dream. You, you, I, this dream that I had, Lord, oh God, beautiful dream, amen? And then get the word of God out. Say, Father, I'm looking for a scripture to stand upon that dream. That scripture, Lord. And just, just, just. Find the scripture, write it down along that dream. And now I'll say, Father, can I, can I call that into existence? Can I call that into existence? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Father. Your word declares uh, that, that I'm the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Therefore, I was once feeling the tail. I was once feeling like beneath, but I'm above, above all the circumstances. Amen. Now, notice what it says in the Amplified. He speaks of non-existence things, of non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Amen. Can you imagine visiting someone that you love and they'll say, you know, I, I have a desire in my heart that when I leave this earth, I'm going to leave you all that I have. All. And you do whatever you want. Amen. It may be a little shanty shack by a river. 
That's good enough to get out to go fishing. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, what I'm saying? You see these are the things that, uh, you know, if you hear someone say that, think about what God is saying to you now. He, he speaks the, of non-existence things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Now, the key is foretold and promised. How will you ever know? How will you ever know what you're capable of doing if God didn't promise you that? Now, notice this. A lot of people look at themselves at their education, but I know a lot of people that have all... I know a guy that has his whole office full of diplomas and can't change a car battery. Amen. You got your post hole digging. You got your PhD, didn't you? I think we all got our PhD digging, amen, out there. You see what I said? I sat at a table with a lot of doctors and executives, and they were introducing me to this organization. And, and man, they were all talking about all they did, all their accomplishments. And now I'm starting to shake. When I start to shake, either it's the anointing or it's doubt, <laughs> weary or fear, amen. I start to shake it. I said, Lord, help me. I'm three three steps away from, they're going to ask me, who am I? I'm just a, I'm just an old guy from Chicago, Illinois, that, was, that just has a Bible education, and that's it. And I owned a mechanic shop, Grease Monkey, you know. And the Lord says, I got you. He came to me, and I says, well, ladies, sir, and ladies here, I earned my PhD at my local church in Texas, and I have a PhD on post hole digging. And they just went crazy, berserk, and God just made it, just turned it around in that meeting. Amen, hallelujah. This isn't God so good. Now notice this, the message Bible says this, with a word, he makes something out of nothing. God, with his word, makes something out of nothing. Oh, that's God. Say with me, I love God. Amen, hallelujah. Now, notice this, if you'll go back to that verse, and let me read the whole thing for you, okay? Abraham was first named father and then became a father. Remember? He was first named a father, then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life. God can do that. With a word, make something out of nothing. When Abraham was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. Say with me, when I am hopeless, I'm going to believe anyway. I want you to say that again. When I am hopeless, I'm going to believe anyway. If you run into a situation that you just feel hopeless, say, I'm going to believe God anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said. So, so tell yourself, you're not going to base yourself on what you, Robert, can do, but I'm going to base on what I can do through God. Hallelujah. Through what God says. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Now let's look at Hebrews 11 chapter. And this is the, the, the great uh, faith hall or the hall of faith. But notice what it says in, in the 11 chapter. In fact, I don't, you ought to have that highlighted wore out. Uh, scribbled, I mean, that is where we are right now. Well, that's where the body of Christ is, amen. Now, notice what it says in verse 1, all right? Everybody there say amen. amen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Pastor, Pastor Christine, can you bring my water, please? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Remember, substance of what you're hoping for. Come, Remember, hope is good. I, I would like to say it this way. Hope is like a picture that you see already. A picture. You know what I'm talking about? A beautiful picture that, that you see in your mind, that you see or you painted or you saw at a museum or you saw at an art store. And, and so that is a picture. But I want you to think about that picture. That artist did not draw that out of something that came out of just something out of nowhere. He had to see it first for him to draw it. There had to be an illumination, had to be a, 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 like, a, like a little desire. He saw a mountain with a big elk deer. That was enough to get him going with a, with a hunter down the road. <laughs> with a hunter, Pastor Robert holding a 30-30 down there, right? But notice this, so, so hope is a picture in your life, hope. 
but it's a substance. When you have a desire for something that God's giving you, it's a substance already. It's a substance to get you going into that picture. Can you say amen? So faith now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence things not seen. You can't, you know, you're not seen in the natural. Paul Yonggi Cho, a Korean pastor, when he start, first started believing for furniture, he invited his friend over to an empty apartment. Well, his friend said it was empty, but he said, how do you like my chairs? How do you like my couch? And his friend said, there ain't nothing here. He said, no, 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 there's a beautiful couch here, and there's a beautiful table here, and, and this is where I put my beautiful bike, and this is another couch here. This is where I sleep here. You see what I'm saying? And he says, wait a minute. What, what? He would, Paul young Cho was seeing what he already hoped for, but his friend never saw it. And the day came that he invited his friend over again, and his friend said, whoa, I see exactly what you were talking about. That was Paul young Cho's hope that came to manifestation by faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And there are many things that you can, you can see there. But notice what it says, through faith, through faith, now remember faith is the key here, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Fashioned. The word worlds fashioned by the word of God. So that things which are not seen Things that are not seen were not made of things which do appear. Now notice this, so, so by faith, through, by God's faith, through his confession, allow the Holy Spirit to work. Remember we said uh, Wednesday in Genesis 1 and 2? He says the earth was without form and dark, but the Spirit of the Holy Spirit hovered over it. The Holy Spirit hovered over the darkness and the unformed world. And then God said, let there be, and there was an earth. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just hovered and made. So what's going on here? He's teaching us that by God's faith, through his confession, allowed the Spirit of God to create. You have that same ability. You have the Holy Spirit with you, in you, by you. See, the Holy Spirit is not left. The Holy Spirit here in this room uh, quickening to you to understand. All of a sudden, your eyes are, your spiritual eyes are starting to open up by the Holy Spirit's work. All of a sudden, you start recognizing the Word of God like you never saw before. That's the work of the Holy Spirit already. But now, your confession through the Word of God allows the Spirit of God to work and create. Amen. Thank God that we have a fence. And we didn't have a fence. Thank God that we have a fence here. And Saturday, Sunday morning, we came and those, that neighbor put up a whole fence. And he woke up one day and says, I just keep hearing in my heart to put up a fence and not charge the church. I'm going to do it myself. And he did it. We have a fence. We declared it. We have some beautiful gates. We declared it. That's the way it's supposed to be. You speak the word of the Lord over your situations and you command it and you cause the angels of God, the Holy Spirit, to work and the angels to work. Now don't say, I will never have if you're hearing what the word of God says. Don't ever say, I can never have that. I can never afford that. I will never be able to do that. You will never, never, ever have it then because you just confess never, ever have it. But if you'll confess, I have it now in Jesus' name. I believe in God for that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Just keep reading. Go with me to uh, verses uh, 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 through faith who understands. And let's drop all the way to verses 6 now. All right. I want you to see this with your own beautiful eyes. But without faith, but without the command of the word of God in faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, I'm coming to God because I believe him. And let me tell you something. We've never seen God, but we feel his presence. You've never seen Jesus, but you believe the word of God and you feel his presence. You've never seen an angel except some, but you believe the word of God. The Bible says tithe and and he'll rebuke the devil, devour for, the devour for your sake. You've never seen the devil, but you know he's real because of, of the evil that's around. Folks, listen, everything that you, anything that kills, steals, and destroys is of the devil. Don't ever, don't ever get those mixed up. 
The devil comes what to kill, or excuse me, steal, kill, and to destroy. So in other words, that's his activity. But God sent Jesus into this world that he might give you life to the abundance. Listen, abundance, heaven on earth. You can experience the blessings of God here on earth. Why, what, you know, if you go to heaven and you say, wow, I never, I never imagined that. Well, God said, you could have had it on earth if you would have believed my word. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Now, notice this. If you look at the fifth verse, the fifth verse, hallelujah, amen. By faith, Enoch was translated. This is, this is the prophet Enoch. He was and he's no more. Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had te his testimony that he pleased God. Folks, this guy never tasted death. Just, just translated it straight to heaven. <laughs> now, how did he do that? By faith. So faith is a law that is so powerful that it even will translate you. Or Roberts, in the middle of the night, went in the spirit to a part of Ethiopia, did ministry there, came back, and then found his shoes all full of dirt and mud, mud that he never saw. So he took, him, he took it to his, his science lab, his science laboratory of all the, all the scientists that are studying there at ORU, and they started, they started looking at that soil, and they said, this soil is not in the United States. This soil it can only be found in Ethiopia. He was translated in the middle of the night. Now, I'm going to tell you something that, that is going to get you excited. Now, I share this only with faith people. I don't share it with unbelievers. I share it with faith people. One day after church, Pastor Chris, you will remember, we had an awesome service. Oh, powerful service. Worshiping the Lord. Oh, just the power of God was in that. It was thick, moving, the move of God. And, and it was just hard to leave. So we're going home. We lived, in, we lived uh, it, 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 to get to our house, we had to go through the country. So it was dark, one line road. And, and the kids were all little. Jason's behind me, and Jennifer's there, and Teresa's in the middle. So we're just worshiping the Lord, just praising God going home. And all of a sudden, um, th there was a, a, a truck that came so fast. And I remember, you know how close you get to headlights? You can actually feel the headlights. That truck came so close that we saw the rear headlight or the rear tail lights this way and that's what I said we pulled over because it was supernatural and we just says praise God my little son behind me said dad that truck just went through us little guy maybe three four years old right Jason and then I said kids what did you he says dad my daughter Jennifer's dad that was weird but notice this in the process of worshiping God, there was a cloud around our car. It's a beautiful cloud, I'll never forget. We're just worshiping God. What happened? That truck was meant to kill us, a T-bone us. But I'll tell you what, I'll never forget the experience that we felt after that truck went through us. Something so powerful, a translation of the power of God that just turned our, our whole being into a supernatural being and just kept us going. And notice this, that's powerful. Now notice this, uh, if you see this in verses 8, look at verses, we were in verses 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him is, is being diligent, not being a hopscotch worshiper. You know, every once in a while, uh, or when things go bad, or when you really need a fix from God. It's, it's when things are going well, and things are going tough, and things are going rough, and you just, you're just diligent seeking God. He's a rewarder of those that will be diligent. God satisfies the diligent heart. God protects the diligent. God blesses the diligent. God favors the diligent. God honors the diligent. And it goes on and on. And listen, folks, God causes you to be blessed because of your diligence. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And notice what it says here in verse 7, by faith, Noah, the one that built that ark, 
by faith no we're being warned of God of things not seen yet it took him a hundred years to build that ark it never rained where he had so people laughed at him and said ha, ha, you're dumb you're ridiculous going to build a ship in the middle of a forest uh, uh, not seen moved with reverence fear reverence uh, diligent uh, prepared the ark to the saving of his house by which he uh, condemned the world and became the heirs of righteous which is by faith faith caused him to live during this great deluge all the people of the earth drowned except him and his family simply because the man believed God and it was by faith think about faith he had a dream that the Lord spoke to him cut these trees down make this type of tar uh, out of these tars trees and, and, and start making this ship this size. I want you to make it this size. Folks, he believed God started chopping trees down. His sons are probably asking him, Dad, what do we do? We'll go make, God made, told us to make this big ship. And, and for 100 years he did it until finally it started to rain and rain and rain until the rain, the floodwaters just went above the highest mountain of the world. How did he do it, Pastor? All together, by faith. See, faith is powerful. Now, let's keep reading, uh, if you would. It says here, by faith, uh, excuse me, verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into the place he should after received for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing where, whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in this land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, which is tense, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him for the same promise. Folks, this is the, the promise is the word of God. The promise here is what God said. You and I already have what God said in the word of God. Pastor, I, I never heard God speak. Here he is. He's speaking to us. He's speaking to us every day. He's speaking to us. Hallelujah. We just got to take it by faith and say, I believe what he said. I believe the word of God. Amen. So in other words, by faith, he left, he left comfort and went to a place that was promised for him, a desert place. The Bible, can you imagine what he thought? God, you're sending me out to the desert to die? But see, God was sending him to the promised land, which is now Israel. Israel, hallelujah, amen, Israel, and thank God for the father of faith, Abraham, that came to a place which we now see Israel, where Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, that's why the fights are happening there, that's why the Antichrist is going to try to take Jerusalem, oh, he's going to take it for a while, that's why there's such a, why is, why is there so many countries against the Jewish people, even in our, even in our colleges today, why, why, why? Because of the word of God. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. Oh, don't you come against Israel. You pray for the Jewish people. Pray for the Jewish students in this country that are going through a lot right now. Pray, pray, pray. He who loves Israel, he who loves the apple of God's eye, I will bless, God said. The moment you and I curse Israel, boy, you're cursed. You know what that means? You're just open for the enemy. Bless Israel. Hallelujah. Bless Israel. Bless Israel. Amen. So in other words, the power of the spoken word of faith, power of the spoken word of faith causes things to happen. Now notice this. Do you know how Jesus was raised from the dead? By faith. Do you know how Jesus went to the cross? By faith. Do you know how Jesus was seated at the right hand of the Father? By faith. So faith in, in what Jesus believed, set him above high in the thrones of heaven. Hallelujah. And right now he's seated, Jesus right now is seated on the right hand of our Father God, Elohim, right? He's seated there forever, ever making intercession for you. Yes, we have him in our heart, we feel him in our presence, we feel the anointing of God. I don't feel the anointing of God right now. We're talking about Jesus, amen, the anointing is present. Come on, let's just worship the Lord. Father, we just worship you. We honor you, Lord, because you're present here. We're talking about you, my Father. We're talking about you, giving you praise. Amen. So, uh, faith made this available for us. Now, listen to what I'm going to say, and I want you to understand this. Faith lies dormant 
until you make a demand and places and place on it. Either you can have faith or fear, and I've had both of them, and I'd rather have faith, is transmitted. Faith, fear or faith is transmitted by your words. I want to say something that I want you to think about this now. Now think about this. Have you ever noticed when a mouse runs across a room that you get, you get adults that just jump on top of couches and go crazy? I mean, have you ever seen that? That little thing is not going to hurt you. It's the spirit of fear. Now don't try to um, make it look pretty and say, well, you know, pastor, it's just, just it's common for us. No, 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 it's not common. That's not common. Amen. Amen. The Bible says we shall fear no beast, we shall fear no human, and we should fear no demon or devil. Now, why are you going to get all scared for a little mouse? Let me take it further. How about a little spider? I had a cousin run into a spider web. She, she screamed murder. You remember one time we went horse riding? We took a bunch of couples out to horse riding, and uh, we had a dinner out in the middle of a, of a forest. And so we thought they were going to pick us up on a trailer, take our horses, and it was already dark. And I went to go talk to the, 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 the lead person. I says, now, are they bringing trailers to pick up these horses? Because we're not going to ride in the dark. He said, oh, no, we're going to ride in the dark. I said, what? <laughs> okay. So he was the lead, and I was second. You should have seen everybody with their cell phones <laughs> riding their horses. <laughs> hey, man. And I told everybody, I said, okay, everybody, now keep your head lower than the horse's head because we're going to be riding through some brush that we came through. Remember those brushes? So everybody ride your head low. They're riding low. So the horse was up there, right? <laughs> it was a fun night. And all of a sudden, there was a rabbit or a squirrel spooked one of our horses. And this girl that was on this horse screamed to, literally she screamed, I thought she got bit by a rattle. I don't know what happened. She screamed. All the horses that were in line just got off all crazy. They're just, my horse, woo, hold it, hold it. And they're just like this. And then they just stopped. Those horses, little froze because they even got scared. And the guy got on his horse and I turned around and rode back and she was waiting in the back. And I said, what happened? She says, I heard something. You heard something, you just caused all of us to get almost frightened and all of us knocked out of horses. You see what fear does? Fear could have damaged and could have hurt a lot of people on these horses. So fear or faith is transmitted by your words. In the name of Jesus, I have not the spirit of fear over that mouse. In the name of Jesus, I have no spirit of fear over that spider. In Jesus' name. Now, why do I say the things that are so simple? Because those little things that I said... Are, uh, uh, are, are little bitsy things that stir up your fear. You know, parents, they, they scare their children in the dark thinking it's fun. What you're doing, you're establishing, you're pregnating them with fear. Amen. I, I think that's why, uh, you know, those fear movies that, 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 that's out there, it's, it's, it's not good for you. It's not good for anyone. It stirs up fear. So fear is a spirit. Fear is not just an emotion. Fear is a spirit. And the spirit is of the devil, so fear gets in you. I remember when that movie first came out. What's that movie called where that girl just twisted her head? The Exorcist, when it first came out. Man, I couldn't sleep for weeks, man. That thing was awful. Amen. And I found out, and when I got saved, that was a spirit of fear. I had to cast that spirit of fear. When I was a little boy, my father sent me to the basement. And, and you know, when he turns on the light in the basement, uh, there was a glove that was stuck like this, so when the light hit it, it was on the wall, it looked like a monster, a glove. So all, all my, my uh, young years, even to preteen, I was scared to go in that basement. Until one day we went to visit my cousin, we're adults now, we're pastors now, and my cousin now owns that house that I grew up in, still to this day. And so I remember we're sitting there just laughing, looking at the house, you know, when, when you go, when you grow up in a house, everything looks so big, but when you're adults, it looks so small, it was so small. And I said, you know what, let's go to the basement, I got to go see something in the basement. Would you believe that glove was still there in the basement? <laughs> and he had a PCB pipe hanging there, and I got that pipe, and I reached over to get that glove, brought that glove back, and it was an old leather glove, 
old leather glove. And I said, you know, I put that thing in my hand. I said, you know what? You foul spirit that was on this glove that caused me to fear. Look at you. You're just a dead leather hanging out there. <laughs> Amen. I'll never forget that. We laughed. We laughed. I told my children about that. But I tell you, I remember that fear I had. They made a movie, too. I think one of those black and white movies where there's a hand moving around. That movie reminded me of that glove. <laughs> so in other words, faith lays dormant, ladies and gentlemen, until a demand is placed on it. Your faith will lay dormant until you make a demand. I think we need to make demands before we go. Amen, hallelujah. Go and read Romans, the 10th chapter. Hallelujah, amen. Now, how many of us are saved? Raise your hand so that we can declare it all together. Saved, have Jesus in your heart, full of God. Amen. Say, I'm saved, delivered, and set free, and I'm going to heaven. Amen. Amen. amen, that's powerful, right? Now, notice this. Let's look at the 10th chapter, verses 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh. Underline faith speaketh. That's that declaration. That's that, that's that command. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on the wise. Say not in thy heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down above from above. Or who shall descend into the deep. That is to bring Christ again from the dead. In other words, don't say these things when you know it's in the word of God. Jesus died on that third day, and on that third day, he went to the pit of hell to get the keys of death and hell in the grave. And on the third day, he was resurrected. See, you and I know that. That's, that's, that's essential. That's, that's the ABCs of our faith. Amen. One lady said, Pastor, how can you preach God went to hell? Uh, well, the Bible said he did. Well, I, I, I never saw that. Well, now you see it. He says, or who shall ascend? Uh, that is, but verse 8. Are you with me? But verse 8. But what saith it, the word is in the, nigh thee, even in the mouth, and then in the heart, that is the word, underline or circle, the word of faith, which we preach, herald, which we believe. You're hearing the word of faith right now. You're hearing it. We're believing it. So it is the word that is in you, it is close to you, it is in your mouth, and it is in your heart. So if it's in your heart, why are you going to let out the devil's words? If it's in your mouth, why are you going to cuss what the devil says? You're going to say what the word says. No, practice, practice saying the word of God. Practice saying the word of God. Practice, let it come out of you. Practice, practice, practice. Practice. Instead of saying, oh, uh, you know, I can never. Practice, practice. You know what I'm saying? When you hit your toe in the middle of the night, you say, oh, 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 in the name of Jesus. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Practice, 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 practice. Why? Because it's in you. It's in you. It wants to come out. It wants to come out. Hallelujah. We're so used to saying the negative, the bad, the curses, and the GDs, and all this because of what has happened in our life, right? But notice this. It says that. Now, notice this. Four, verse 4, four verse uh, nine, that if thou shalt confess or profess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you got saved by faith. Everybody here got saved by faith. How do you know you got saved? Because the word says, if I confess Jesus, that he died and the third day he resurrected, I'm saved. That's faith already. Believing in the unknown God. Believing that you never saw him on the cross but you believe the word of God. You believe what your pastor says, right? So I believe that Jesus died on that cross, but on that third day he resurrected. Oh, and he's seated right in the heavenlies. Father, thank you for coming to my heart. You have forgiven me of all my sins. That's faith already. If you use that already, if you use that already, amen, if you said that already, don't stop saying things of faith. Come on, church, amen. Now, verses 16. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, underline that, the mouth, tu boca, your mouth, and the mouth, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That word salvation is sozo. In other words, my mouth creates sozo. My mouth creates things that will bring me into a higher place with God. Come on, say it, believe it, agree with the word of God. Amen. Come on, church. God calls us to a higher level in faith, so we might as well climb higher with him. And listen to this. Manifestations will show up. You will need not to share what God has said simply by them saying, look what God has done for you. And then you'll say, well, let me tell you, 
It's confession of faith that works every time. Can you say amen? Look at, look at, um, let's go back to Romans 10 chapter, amen? Oh, excuse me, uh, we're there already. I'm sorry. Go with me to Corinthians. Hallelujah, amen. Sometimes I just want to say things that sometimes just, you know, you can be upset about something, you want to say things, and I've learned to just put my mouth and say, "Mm -mm, you're not saying a word. (laughs) You're not saying a word until you get it right. You're not going to confess anything out of your mouth. Don't, uh, be quiet, be quiet. Don't even say anything until you get your right pattern back of thinking. So I'll wait. I say, oh, yes, Father, thank you, Lord. I say the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 13. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you there? 2 Corinthians, uh, 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 boo, 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 I'm not there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Notice what it says in verse 13. We have the same spirit of faith. We have, that's past tense, we already have it. It's a spirit of faith, not spirit of fear. According as written, which is the word of God, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. So I could say this, the Oasis Center Church believes, so we speak. We have the same spirit of faith in this church. Amen. You know, uh, uh, I'll say this, and let me just hold my place there. I'll say this. People of faith do speak different. So don't feel bad. If you're saying something of faith and someone says, now what do you mean by that? Don't feel bad. Because a lot of people still don't speak the way faith speaks. Amen. We have Christians who say, oh, it it just scared me to death. And and you'll say, no, sister. It caused you to have life in Jesus. So they'll look at you like, what are you talking about? Well, you just said scared me to death. That's not scriptural. I I just gave you scripture. You see what I'm saying? There are things that we may say like that. Oh, I could just die laughing. (laughs) Oh, you know, I I have rheumatitis arthritis. And you're a believer. No, no, you don't claim that. You 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 don't own it. You say, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus over rheumatitis arthritis in Jesus' name. Don't you confess it? Because the confession now brings it even more. Come on, church, amen. I have a headache. No, 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 no. I'm believing God that I'm healed totally from this pain right now in Jesus' name. Well, you're putting the word over that situation, right? Now, notice what it says here. We, in verse 13, we speak like God and create like God. But it's all in your confession. It's all in your confession of faith. Can I say that again? It's all in the confession of faith. Now, no, we're not replacing God. We're not here uh, to replace God. No, there's a God still. But what we're doing is learning to be children of God. Do you get that? Do you get that? We're learning to be children of God through the Word of God. Come on. We're learning to be more like Jesus. We're learning to talk like God. If God said you have the same spirit that's in you, that's in my son, then you have the same spirit. So what are we doing? We're not replacing God and we're not kicking Jesus out. We're just saying, Father, we're becoming more like you through the Word. And the word says this, and that's what we're standing on, the word of God. Amen. And don't, 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 get, don't get all upset about uh, situations where, you know, I don't understand why pastor's saying that. God is so sovereign. God can do what he wants to. Can I answer you for a moment? If God can do what he wants to, then why is he causing such a chaos in this world? Now, notice, this, notice what I said that. Why is he causing such a chaos? It's not God causing the chaos. It's Satan using people to say his words to cause chaos. These shootings, these shootings in these high schools, this is not normal. This is not God sent. It's not God doing this. This is Satan using individual, demonic individual. And it could be these individuals probably heard a voice but did not cancel that voice. Or maybe somebody talked to this, or maybe somebody did something, controlled this person's mind. It wasn't that person's well-being, it was 
a demonic pressure that came on him. Amen. Now go with me to John, the 14th chapter. So in other words, I'm going to speak what the Word says. I'm going to say what God says. And if, and if I don't know the Word of God right now, Pastor, I'm not going to say a word until I know the Word of God. Don't say a word. You know, don't say a word. If, if, if they fire you, don't say a word about that, which, which just happened, if you don't know the Word of God. But if you know the Word of God, just say, Amen. God just going to give me a better one according to His Word. I'm just going to get a better job in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not going to fret. God's going to take care of my finances because I'm a tither, and God's going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll be the first one to get the job the next day. Come on, church. I have so many testimonies of that. Look at John, the 14th chapter, verses 10. Amen? Amen? Praise God. It's so, so good. It, it, we, we, we just enjoy Jesus. Amen. Verses 10 of John 14. Hallelujah. Amen. 14 says in verse 10. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. Believest that, Jesus said this, believest thou not that I am the Father, and the Father that, that in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak out of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now look, go with me to the fifth chapter now. The fifth chapter. Are you there? The fifth chapter, verse 30 now. Jesus just said, gave us some powerful keys, verse 30. All right? Notice what it says. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. Verses 19 of that same chapter. Look what it says in 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For whatever soever he doeth, these also doeth, uh, excuse, doeth the Son likewise. Now what do we just read? The key to Jesus' success, now I want you to hear this, is saying what God said. The key to your success, like Jesus, is saying what God said. That means you need to know the word. Now notice this. The key to the success that Jesus had by God was Jesus operated in miracles, what we just talked about, by him hearing the Father. I'll give you a good example. You remember when he was going into the temple of God, uh, the time that he whipped all the money changers and turn the tables upside down. Remember, uh, everybody focuses on his getting, he's angry and all that. Well, the focus was on his zeal for the house of God. But do you remember the day before he walked into the church and he saw everybody and then he just went back home? That, that quite, that's quite interesting. Why did he go back home? He went back home to ask Jesus, to ask God, God, what do I do now? God's the one that told him what to do. And notice this, I want, I want you to realize something. We're almost, in fact, uh, we're going to be open for Wednesday. But notice this, the key to Jesus' success is always asking God, God, what do you want me to do in this situation? This is how we operate, ladies and gentlemen. Are you with me, church? This is how we operate. We get the word of God and ask God, God, okay. How do you want me to handle this? Because I need to do what you say, God. And every time you do what God says, you're going to get success every time every time every time amen go with me to luke the 13th chapter hallelujah amen hallelujah hallelujah look at the 13th chapter praise the name of jesus the 13th chapter verse 11 Behold, behold there, was a, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. How many years? And was bowed together and could in no ways lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called to her and said unto her, Woman, 
thou art loosened from this infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now notice what it says here. Why did he heal this woman? Because he saw her in pain, bowed over. Now notice the key here. You'll look at it, and it says, Behold, verse 10, And he was teaching in one of the synagogues in the Sabbath on a Sunday, and behold, that's the key right here, and behold. Now notice this. I want you to understand what I'm going to say, and I want you to hear this clearly. When you get the Word of God, in the Word, whatever it may be, if you're touch, teaching it, studying it, reading it, in the Word, God already speaking to you. That word behold means look. So as he's teaching, God is speaking to him, and then comes this woman. So he kind of finishes teaching with a very good practical miracle. Now listen to this, folks. I was in Mexico years ago. Years ago, we were getting ready to do a camp meeting. And, uh, you know, it was one of those first nights that we're believing God for people to come. And, and it was a packed house. It was a packed house. But I noticed there was a woman in the back. I noticed, I noticed that she was walking very, very bent over. Her hip was probably up here somewhere. She looked like she was in pain. She was a... It came with a cane, and she walked in, but I noticed her legs were full of mud, mud up to her knees. And so it had rained that morning, so I knew that she had walked in the mud to church. But I saw her bowed over, bent. I mean, literally her hip was, I mean, it's so, her curve was so jointed out. And so as my pastor, I'm, I'm translating from my pastor, so I'm standing here, my pastor's teaching the Word of God, and I notice my pastor stops, and he starts praying to the Holy Ghost, Shura Rabata. And then he'll get back in that word. And then he'll stop, Shura Rabata. He said, woman, come up here, the woman that just walked in church. She came up, right? Folks, when he laid hands on her, spoke life into her body, I heard like a tree limb broke, like a big oak tree in Texas fell. <laughs> And when I heard it, her hip dropped, and she screamed because she saw the power in the hip go back. And when she screamed, she took off running, man. I'm talking about running. And that service broke out with healing like I never saw. That's where I saw that woman with the, the swivel, the withered hand. But what am I saying? It was under the word that the promise of God came. And then later on, I asked my pastor, he says, the Lord was speaking to me that at this very moment, there's going to be a healing that's going to change the whole environment of the service. The woman got healed. Folks, listen, the word is powerful. When you and I get in that word, faith rises in you, which is faith is spiritual. Faith comes, and all of a sudden, you get, you get direction. You get ideas. That only God can give you. Uh, things that are so supernatural, only God can do that. Last Sunday, is uh, before church, I was just praying, get, waiting for Pastor Christine. Guys get dressed in five minutes, girls take, eh, for a long time. So I'm sitting on my recliner, just praying in the Holy Ghost, just praying for the church, praying for the service, and, and just praying in the Holy Ghost, going over my nose, just praying. All of a sudden, the Lord said, you remember that person bought you a steamer for Christmas? That steamer is under your sink all the way in the back. You had to put your hand all the way back there. And I said, that's strange, God. Well, earlier, before she got dressed, before I was getting dressed, I took my suit out, and I noticed my suit was all wrinkled because I had traveled with my suit, and I wrinkled it. And I remember making a comment to my wife saying, boy, this suit, I just need a steamer. And I thought about an iron, the iron produced it, but it'll take forever. So I put the suit, and I was not going to wear it. But that was my desire to wear that suit that morning, last, last Sunday. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit tells me about a steamer that someone bought to us about 10 years ago as a Christmas present. And I ran underneath, I opened the cabinet, and we reached farther, and my wife reached her head in there, and she said, there it is, it's still in the box. 
had to break the, the seal that was out of it and open it up, and there is a beautiful steamer. All you had to do is just put salt in water, and it steams so much. And I'm just getting my suit, and the Lord, and I'm just thanking the Lord, and it's almost like the Lord says, see, even those things I love you for. Folks, listen, I'm telling you, if God can do things like that by you taking time in his presence, what can he do for you in things that you don't know he can do for you? Amen? I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Let's go ahead and stand up, ladies and gentlemen. Amen? I think it's worth it. I think it really is worth it. Instead of just being a hearer, not a doer, Jesus said, don't be a, do don't be a hearer, only do be a doer. In other words, just put some corresponding action which you heard. And I think we need to take advantage of, of what the Word is telling us today. So, so I think we need to get, first of all, go back and get that picture painted first and get reality. Find out the hope that is in you, the hope of glory. Get a hope picture of hope. Amen. Have some dream time. Have some time just meditating on the Word. And, and don't run into action. Don't run and... and, and you know, you, you, you only take a minute with God and you run and take you all day long to go believe something for God. I think it takes time to sit with God and just talk with him. Just meditate. Shut the world out. Shut the world out and just sit with God and get a scripture and just, just chew on that scripture. Just meditate on God and just, I worship you, Father, and I praise you. Come on, let's just praise him now. Father, I worship you and I praise you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. Father, thank you for teaching us your word. Thank you. You are a good God. You are so good. You are the best. You're the best ever. There's no one else compared to you, God. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Stones are dead. Wood gods are no good. They're dead. But you're a living God. You made heaven and earth. You made us. And you sent your son, Jesus, on that cross for us. You love us so much, God, that you want us with you. So, Lord, our desire while we're here on earth to do what you've called us to do. Lord, we seek your presence first above anything. We seek to be more like you, Jesus. Before we go and ask you for things, Lord, we just seek you. We want to get closer to you. We change our habit, Lord Jesus. We become more like you. We, we become fixed on you, Jesus. You're our life. You're better than oxygen. You're better than food. You're better than H2O, Lord Jesus. God, we, we focus on you. We love you. We, we shift everything to you, Lord. We change our lifestyle. We change our method. Lord, you're first in our life. First for everything, everything, everything. First, God. You are first in us, Jesus. You're first in us, God. We love you, Father. We worship you. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Now, Father, we, we thank you for the anointing that's present. We thank you, Lord, for pre the presence of Jesus in this place. We thank you, Lord, that we expounded on your word. We heard your voice through the words, through your words, Lord. We believe what we read today. Lord, we, we change our confessions now by the word of God. Teach us, Father, how to talk right. Teach us how to confess right. We, we stop at the track, those negative confessions, those negative thoughts, we stop them at the track. We catch ourselves. We, we cause those words to fall to the ground, become null. We cause those words that have been released, maybe this week, we cancel those assignments right now before they produce seeds. We cancel all those things that we recognize now that we have spoken all week long. We cancel them. We command them to drop to the floor now in Jesus' name. And we respond by saying your words, Lord. So, Father, give us a desire, a hunger to know your promises. Give us a desire and a hunger to hear and read and to experience your presence. Give us a desire to be more in the house of God, Lord. More in your presence, God. Everything else takes second nature, Lord. Everything else, everything else to surrender. But Lord, we put you first in everything. First, Lord. Because Lord, everything else comes from you anyway. We're not afraid to lose it, Lord. We won't lose it because you gave it to us. And if we honor you first, we'll just get increased. So Father, thank you. 
in the name of Jesus. Let's just pray, oh Rabbah, let's just pray in the spirit. Bronda Bashi, Lambrosi Brota Brashaka. Oh, oh God, I thank you. Oh Rabandi Kubrota Branda. Lo Zabrosa Brikiti Hiti. He, 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 he. Hallelujah. Oh, la, 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 la. Yes, Father. We get that word which has that promise. And we confess, make a declaration by faith. And let the Holy Spirit start creating what we just said. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I give you praise. Now, we're going to do something now that I want you to agree with me. We, now notice this, we're going to believe God for some beautiful steel fire exit doors. One here and one downstairs. Though that door downstairs will cut you every time, will pinch you every time you open the door. Ah! It's made wrong. It just opens wrong. The doorknob is too close to the, to the, the edge. And every time, ah! I want to kick that door. I believe, we believe, in the name of Jesus for those two fire doors. And they will be installed professionally and they will be well in Jesus' name. They're metal fire doors with those push exits, those push levers that the ladies can just push as they're taking their pot, their, their, their trays out. And the guys can kick it open as they go out with their hands full of garbage. <laughs> I saw the other day you're taking out bags of garbage. And it's like, I, I don't know why, but that door, uh, that, you open it, your hand gets stuck. Lord, thank you. We call in those doors. For your word says, Lord, believe that you shall receive. We believed, we receive. And Father, it's according to your word that you have given us all things that pertain to life in godliness so we call in those doors quick in jesus name and we thank you for them in the name of jesus holy spirit go do a work angels go do a work hallelujah amen and amen get us the right uh, professional person in jesus name why I say professional it's going to take a professional on that one <laughs> amen praise god father we thank you now you confess what you believe in god for amen you just don't pull something out of a hat. Just say, really something that you're desiring, God. God, I see it in my spirit. I see it. If you don't see it in your spirit, get it in your spirit first. Get it in your spirit first. See it, see it, see it, see it. And then call into existence. Remember, hope is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Hope for it, hope for it. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Rabba Shakata. Let's just pray a while. Shambro. While the Spirit of God is ministering to you. Shambranda Kata. Andi kita, just pray in the Holy Ghost as the Spirit of God is ministering to you. Lidi be bronda bresi kita brashata. Ha, you ko, oh, oh, oh. Oh, nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible. Lende de babran, don't limit the Holy One of Israel. Riboko robo chabranda. Ha, he's giving you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Lidi be korob. Faith is now. Faith is now. Faith is now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen for the worlds were made by the spoken word of God, the spoken word of God, the unseen things of God. Ribo shotorobakata in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lambro Ramba I Alotoboko. Oh la 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 la. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 All righty. Well, let's go from here and have a wonderful day in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's just pray. Wherever that vehicle is going, emergency vehicle, we pray. Protection. Whatever it may be, we pray right now. In Jesus' name, protect. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go from here. Have a wonderful day. Remember, God loves you. We love you. And all together, Jesus is Lord. We'll see you Wednesday for more of God Creates by Faith. Amen.